Let's talk about the shoulder girdle. The shoulder girdle, also known as the pectoral girdle, is made of the clavicle, also known as the collarbone, and the scapula, also known as the shoulder blade. We have two of them because, well, we have two shoulders. The shoulder girdle has a pretty interesting structure. Firstly, unlike what the word girdle would suggest, the shoulder girdle isn't a fully enclosed structure. In the front, the clavicle meets the sternum and the scapula, but the scapulae don't actually attach to any bone in the back, they're only attached to the thorax and spine through muscles. Since the scapula is free to move around, this structure makes the arms very mobile. Another thing that's good for mobility is the nature of the shoulder joint. The scapula's glenoid cavity, which is a fancy way of saying the socket of the shoulder joint, is quite shallow so the joint doesn't limit the motion of the arm bone or humerus. This is great for flexibility, but is also why shoulder dislocations are pretty common. Both the clavicle and scapula are cool, but I think the clavicle is particularly interesting, so I'm going to focus on it for the rest of this video. Sorry scapula, I'll make it up to you, maybe, someday, no promises. Anyways, the clavicle is a pretty interesting bone. It acts like a brace and gives the shoulder structure. This is immediately evidenced when the clavicle is broken, as that causes the shoulder to collapse in on itself. It's not a particularly strong bone, it can fracture pretty easily for all sorts of reasons, falls, traffic accidents, sports collisions, etc. The shape of the clavicle makes it so that it usually breaks outward, since if it breaks inwards, it would damage the aptly named subclavian artery, which would be pretty bad. The clavicle becomes bigger and stronger in those that do manual labor or exercises that work the arm and shoulder muscles, but if you've seen my video on bone remodeling, that shouldn't be too surprising. And that's the shoulder girdle.